In this video, we're going to be going over the settings that I recommend for the Samsung S95C, and this video is being made with the firmware 1123. If there's any future changes with the firmware, I will make a follow-up video. So if you aren't subscribed, subscribe and keep an eye out for that. Also, in every settings video that I do, some people complain that it's too fast, other people complain that it's too slow. If you need to, feel free to pause the video while you make the changes on the TV, and you can also slow down or speed up the playback of the video as you need. So to start out, we're going to go to the home screen and we're going to select a device that will allow us to do SDR and HDR output. So if you're using built-in apps, use that. If you're using an external device, make sure that the video settings for that device are correct. When you first power up the TV, when you hit the settings button, it'll go to a number pad. Press up and you get this screen. If you go all the way to the right, you can edit where these icons are and move your all settings all the way to the left if you choose to do so. Now we're going to go through some basics. So we're going to do support and just see what firmware we're on and then decide if we're going to update the firmware. Under that is device care where we can manage the storage or manage apps that are installed on the TV. So if your TV is starting to feel slow, that's where you can go to fix it. Under general and privacy, you can go through different accessibility options. If you need to use any of these, this is where they are. Under this is the intelligent settings. Now I have this off, I recommend it off. However, you might need to toggle this on for just the sound if you have a Samsung soundbar or if you like the way that sounds using the built-in speakers. Now from there, we can go down to power and energy saving. In this video, we're only gonna be using filmmaker and movie mode for content viewing and only filmmaker SDR will have this on and you'll need to turn it off while in filmmaker SDR. Under panel care, you can see pixel shift does move the image quite a bit and it can make the top bezel look much larger. I like to turn that off and under adjust logo brightness, that will detect logos and static elements and dim the image, which many can find distracting. However, you can leave those enabled if you are worried about burn-in. Moving on, you can change what your start screen goes to, whether it goes to the home screen or your last input. Then going up to connection, this is where you'll find the CEC settings, input signal plus, as well as your connection manager and your HDMI black level. And in the connections menu is where you will find the game mode settings, which we will cover when we get to game mode. So now we're gonna to go to sound, and if you have external receiver or sound bar, this is where you can change it to change the sound output to that. And then we also would wanna change eARC to auto if your device supports eARC, and then change the output audio format to pass through. If you do have any issues, you can set it to PCM or auto, and then we can also adjust the audio delay with eARC if needed. That would be if you're seeing lip sync issues where the mouth movement isn't matching the audio. Now under picture mode, just gonna cycle through the different available options. We're gonna focus on filmmaker and movie. We're gonna use filmmaker for nighttime viewing and movie for daytime viewing. Although you can reverse that if you want to because filmmaker and movie are the same. Now under picture size, you don't need to change anything. It's fine how it is. And then with filmmaker for nighttime, I have set this to 150 nits and I have tested this on multiple S95Cs and it's been the same on all of them. So with brightness at 32 and contrast at 38, it's very important that contrast be at 38 in SDR on these panels as that will fix any of the clipping that is out of the box. For neutral sharpness, so no added sharpness, you would want this to be at zero. However, some people do like to use this, so set it how you want to. Color, you can leave it at 25. I found that 26 is slightly more accurate on the panels that I have measured. Um, so if you do want to change it to 26, you can do that. And then tint should remain at zero. Going down to picture clarity settings. Now, normally this would be off in Filmmaker. Uh, however, if it is off, there will be an occasional every few seconds stutter or artifact. So what we're gonna do is turn it on and then turn blur and judder reduction to zero on both. However, if you do like a little motion smoothness or interpolation, that's the judder that's going to be for movies and TV would be the judder reduction and you can set that how you like it. Clear motion is going to enable black frame insertion which is going to cause some flicker and a loss in brightness so we're not going to use it. Noise reduction is up to you if you're using a cable box you might want to try using it. Blur was only for high frame rate so sports and such. Now going to contrast enhancer I do not recommend using it. Some people like the effect but it will blow out highlights it will crush shadow detail if you use it. So if you want accuracy, leave it off. 
Going down to color tone with Filmmaker, it's gonna to default to warm too, which is where it should be. You can see as you go up, the image gets more and more blue. And all of these panels are fairly close to D65 using warm two out of the box. So that is the most accurate setting. Two point settings, you will not be able to copy because while they are close to D65 out of the box, there is a wide variance in that ballpark per se. So moving the white balance to someone else's panel settings can make yours worse. Now under Gamma, you have the option of BT1886 and 2.2. We're going to use 1886. And if you change it to negative 1, then that'll put you closer to 2.4. It's actually a bit lower than 2.4, whereas leaving it at 0 would be about 2.3, 2.35. So I recommend leaving it at 0. And then Shadow Detail, you do want to put to minus 1, as the shadows are slightly too lifted out of the box. Color Space Settings, leave on Auto. And Smart Calibration, don't bother with it, it's not going to actually do anything to help or make your panel more accurate. And then for peak brightness in night mode, we're going to have that off. Now, the filmmaker is set to about 150 nits, and for movie, we're going to go to about 350. So with movie, we're going to have brightness at 50. We're still going to keep contrast at 38. Again, we're going to fix clipping by doing so. Sharpness at how you want. Color, again, 25, 26. Tint at 0. And then same thing with the clarity settings. We're going to do 0, 0 unless you want to set them how you like. Color tone, again, warm 2. And gamma, we're going to stay in BT1886 at 0. Same thing with shadow detail at negative 1. Now, if your room is very bright, you can turn up the BT1886 to plus 1 if needed. Uh, however, that will make your colors look a little less saturated. So unless your room is very bright, I recommend leaving it at zero. And the same thing with shadow detail. If your room is extremely bright and you're having trouble seeing shadow detail, then you can put it back to zero. However, if your room is just average bright, you can leave it at negative one. Now peak brightness at medium with the brightness at 50, it's gonna be around 350 nits. Now what I'm showing here is a weird bug so if you set the brightness to about 46 and then you go to high, you're going to see absolutely no change. This is something that may or may not get fixed in a later firmware update, but essentially in SDR, peak brightness high is not going to affect any of the brightness levels until you get to 48 and higher. You'll see a big jump going from 47 to 48. That's where the peak brightness high is being activated. So it's not a huge issue, but if you are trying to get your panel to say roughly 500 nits, you can't really do that without a workaround. Whereas if it's on high and then you have brightness at 50, it's like 650 nits. So the workaround that you can try is to go down to the power and energy saving and then turn on brightness optimization and adjust your minimum brightness upwards. And then it could use the light sensor to lower the brightness so you're not stuck at say 650 nits if you're trying to get a little under. Um, really, it's not that big a deal. It's something you can play around with if you find peak brightness high to be too much when it's on 48 and higher, uh, but you find medium or lower than 48 to be not bright enough. So now what we're going to do is load up some HDR content. So you need to have HDR playing, and then the TV will go into HDR mode. Now, if you look at this little icon, when it's in Filmmaker, it won't say HDR, but all the others will. It is in HDR when it's in Filmmaker, it just doesn't show it on the icon. Now, we really don't need to touch anything in Filmmaker HDR, other than change the picture clarity settings to custom, and then setting 00, zero or how you want to set your motion. Also, just a quick point out, on Netflix, it's still going to say Dolby Vision on the HDR titles. However, it is not going to play in Dolby Vision. So some people think they're getting Dolby Vision on their Samsung TV, and they are not. Looking at Contrast Enhancer, you can see it does greatly increase the brightness, but with a lot of clipping and lost detail. Now under HDR, we have the tone mapping option of Static and Active. For this Filmmaker mode or our Night mode, we're going to leave it Accurate in Static mode. Again, in Filmmaker HDR, we also still have 2-point and 20-point available options for calibration. Now, under Gamma, we only have ST2084, which we're going to leave at 0. And Shadow Detail, we're also going to leave at 0. Now, under Color Space, there's Auto as the default, and Auto will default to being in a P3 all the time. 
and that is the most accurate option. Now auto is going to be whatever custom is set to. So if you go to custom and you change it to BT2020, now under auto, it'll stay in BT2020. But we're gonna leave it in P3 because it's the most accurate option. And I know this gets a lot of discussion. Uh, so I'm going to try and demonstrate this for you. So using the new Spears and Munzel disc where we have uh, this we can see in the top right corner it's showing 709 p3 and bt 2020 then on the bottom right it's black and white except for the areas that do get to the edge of p3 and go outside of it so if it turns red in the bottom right that is using bt 2020 but where it's still black and white it's either p3 or 709 so this is demo material which is going to use more bt 2020 than any real content so you can see how little of the colors actually are in BT2020. Something else that a lot of people don't seem to understand is all HDR content is going to be BT2020. None of it is delivered in P3, it's all delivered in BT2020. It's just when content is graded, the grades are targeting to stay within P3 as that is what the TVs today are able to do. Now because QD OLED can do 90% of BT2020 in the future, that may change, but all content currently will mostly stay within P3. Only a little bit of content every now and then will venture out into outside of P3, further into BT2020. Now what Samsung needs to fix is BT2020 should not oversaturate the colors and that should be the default setting so that you get full use of its ability. But you can see, especially with skin tones, how red and magenta they get and how oversaturated everything becomes when you do use the BT2020 option. So we're gonna keep it in P3 for accuracy and so that everything isn't oversaturated. Now we're gonna to go to the movie mode and HDR is meant to be viewed in a dark room. However, a lot of people are going to be watching HDR in a bright room. So there are some options that we can use to brighten it up to make it more visible in your bright room. Now one thing that's weird is if you toggle picture mode here, it looks like it's gonna get darker with movie, but then as soon as you select it, it gets brighter. It's just a weird bug. All right, so pretty much, pretty similar to Filmmaker HDR, but we're gonna make a little bit of change. Again, make sure you set your clarity settings, how you'd like to have them, or if you want it to be no smoothing, set it to zero, zero. Contrast enhancer, same as before. Don't recommend using it because you will lose a lot of detail in using it, uh, even though it does brighten the image. However, with the active tone mapping option, we are able to get the image brighter with that alone. So I think that should be enough for most bright rooms. Going from static to active, you can see a large increase in the brightness. And then again, color tone, we're gonna leave it warm too. Gamma is still ST2084. However, with the active setting, it gets brighter by causing a very large lift in the EOTF. So this is going to be basically a brightness slider that you adjust to your room. So if your room is extremely bright, you can leave it at zero or maybe increase it a little. But if your room is just moderately bright, you might wanna just set it to negative one or even negative two. Basically, this is just set it to your room to what looks good to you for the SD2084, as it's not gonna be accurate either way. I set it to negative one and I set shadow detail to negative one as well, so it's not too overly brightened for my room. So now again, if I toggle to Filmmaker, you first see Filmmaker get brighter, but that's not how it actually is. Once you select it, then you see how it's darker. And if you go to this option in the settings, then you can toggle through each picture mode and see the difference more correctly. So that's gonna be the SDR and HDR for movie and TV watching. Now we're going to set up some devices and then move into game mode. So I have a Panasonic UB820, which is a UHD player that supports HDR10+. And because it's a Samsung that supports HDR10+, I'm gonna make sure that we're getting that. So if we go into the normal settings and then go to the picture HDMI settings, there is no Dolby Vision on the Samsung, so we go ahead and turn that off. And then HDR10 plus setting, just make sure that is set to on. Everything else, you pretty much leave default. And under advanced settings, the menu should look like this. And for the HDR TV type, it doesn't really matter what you set it to because we are going to turn off the HDR optimizer on the player because the TV does have its own tone mapping and we wanna use that instead of letting the player do the tone mapping. Now the tone mapping option on the player is good for say a projector or an older HDR TV. So the way you disable 
the HDR optimizer is you load into HDR10 content and then you hold down the HDR setting button so you can get to this menu and turn off HDR optimizer. Now we're going to move into gaming. Now I did have a pure gaming settings video before this that went into detail about how to set up gaming and what options to use, but we will quickly kind of recap and cover some of this, starting with the Nintendo Switch. Now we're going to use the original picture mode preset for game mode in SDR with the contrast again at 38 and the color we can leave at 25 in game mode. Uh, game mode does not have 20 point settings, so if you are getting calibrated, you can't do that. Uh, shadow detail in game mode should be negative two though, because it does lift shadows more than outside of game mode. Now I have the peak brightness at medium, however if you do set it to high and go to clear motion to turn on the black frame insertion, the Nintendo Switch is one of the cases where I actually like to do that, however you may not, and that's fine. Uh, so set the peak brightness to medium or high or off, however you want to set it for your room. And then again, if you hold down the play pause button on the remote, you get the game bar. And if standard and original are set to the same options, you can see where standard is quite different and you do lose a lot of detail with it. So I fully recommend using original if you're looking for accuracy in your SDR games. I am speeding this up because again, I do have a full video for game mode going through all of this already. So I will have that linked in the description and I will put it up at the top of the screen for you. So in SDR with the Xbox or the PlayStation, again, you can use the original picture mode, but then with HDR, you're not really gonna use the original picture mode except for very specific use cases. So by turning the game HDR setting on to basic, that will take you out of the picture profile options in the game mode, uh, so original won't be available, and game HDR on basic, is going to be the more accurate option than advanced as advanced really all it's doing is just changing all the expert settings here uh, to something that's wildly inaccurate so with the game hdr on basic we're just going to set st2084 to negative one shadow detail to negative two and set color to 22 other than that it should all be good to go then on the xbox hdr setup pull both bumpers and triggers at the same time to get the menu on the top right and just set it to 2000 nits for the white screens and zero for the black. Over on the PlayStation, you can see 1440p output does not work. Not a big deal in my opinion. Uh, then go down to adjust HDR and we're gonna go all the way darker and then you're gonna count upwards 20 clicks. That's about 2000 nits on the PS5 and you're gonna do that for both of these white screens. And then for the black one, just go all the way down. Now, when should you use the original mode in HDR? That will be for games like God of War, which do not have a nit slider, and the brightness slider is going to change the entire image, so the shadows and everything else. It also does not use the system level setting. So with game HDR, the highlights are gonna be blown out. Now, the way to fix this is to go to the original picture game mode by disabling the game HDR option but then your settings are gonna be the same as they are in SDR, so you would have to turn your contrast back to 50 and your peak brightness to high. Then games like God of War will look right without having blown out highlight detail. Here it looks a little blown out because of the camera, but if you go watch the gaming video I did, that video is in HDR and you can see the detail better. Now originally I was gonna do a dedicated video for PC, however, the setup was actually quite easy and everything worked well for the most part. Uh, so. I'm going to show going from Apple TV straight over to PC connected to a different input on the TV. And this is again with firmware 1123 and there's absolutely no problem. The first time I switched over to PC, it went straight into 144 Hertz with 4K and only had to make some minor adjustments. The flicker is not there in person. That's just because now the TV is at 144 Hertz and the camera was at the same shutter speed as before. Uh, didn't realize that was going to happen until seeing it just now. But we can see that we are at 143.8, so basically 144 Hertz, 10 bit, RGB, HDR, everything is working fine. Over on the NVIDIA control panel, you can see all the different resolutions and whatnot available. Just under PC, use 3840 by 2160, set it to 144 Hertz if it doesn't automatically do that for you. And then you can manually select RGB or YCC and 10-bit and so on with NVIDIA's control panel. The only thing that I really had to change there was just to enable the G-Sync. Now one of the only issues that seem to be happening with PC is at 144 Hz. Dolby Atmos seems to be having an issue when using eARC. 
It did work for me the first time I tried it, but then after that it stopped working, and I've seen other people on the forums that have issues getting it to work as well. One person seems it to be working for them, so it does seem to be an issue that's pretty widespread, but not everyone is affected. However, just using 5.1 works fine for me, uh, and lowering the refresh rate can work with Atmos as well. However, outside of that, everything with gaming seems to be fine, had no problem getting 4K, 144 hertz, HDR with VRR, everything working just fine. On the TV, we're gonna use all the same settings that were used for the consoles. However, game mode settings do not apply to all inputs. So for each gaming device you have connected to the TV, you will have to set all the game mode settings for each one. But then that's it. That's all the settings for every kind of device I could think of that would be relevant today. So I hope this helps you out and thank you all for watching. And I will have a link, like I said earlier, to the game mode settings that I did previously. So have a good one. Thanks.